Hello and welcome back. So today's video is going to be too much interesting. We'll be looking into the background of Spark's working. Now, this will enable us to start working on the advanced topic of Spark going forward. Now, if you have not seen our videos previously, I would recommend you to go back and watch our previous videos. Today, we will understand what is Spark's explain plan. We'll also see what are directed as cyclic graphs or tags. We will understand what is SUPL and what are its impact on stages and tasks. And we'll also see how data frames are made up of. Now, this is very important that you understand these concepts clearly. So, without any delay, let's begin. Okay, to understand and demonstrate today's example, we will consider two data frames. This is data frame 1 and this is data frame 2. Both the data frames consist of even numbers. The first data frame will have only one column called ID and it will have even numbers till 200 with a step of 2. Same thing for the second data frame, we will have the same ID column, but this time the step will be 4. And again, we will have the even numbers till 200. Now, for next step, we will repartition both the data frames with 5 and 7 respectively. And later, we will join both of them to create one data frame called sum, in which we will find the sum of the IDs. This will be the complete flow for our demonstration today. Now, I understand this example looks simple, but this will help us to understand a lot of things today. So, I am in my Jupyter Lab environment. As usual, we will generate our Spark session. For today's example, I'll consider the master as local. Before we will generate our data frames and we will process them, I'll disable some of the configurations which are enabled in Spark 3.0, which helps in optimization. For today's example, I will disable the adaptive query engine and the broadcast join. Now, we will understand more about this AQE and broadcast join in future sessions. For now, we will just disable them so that we can see what is happening in the background. Let me generate the Spark session and disable the configurations. Okay. Let me check the default parallelism so that we can know how many tasks can run in parallel. So to do that, I'll write spark dot spark context dot default parallelism. Let me run this. Okay, it is eight. It implies eight tasks can run in parallel. Okay, here is our first data frame and the second data frame. So as mentioned, we are going to create two data frames with a range of 200 with a step of 2 and 4. And both the data frames will contain even number. There will be only one column called ID so that we can join both the data frames. Let me run this. Okay, our data frame is generated, but we have not triggered any action. So if we go back and refresh our Spark UI, nothing will happen. Let me go back. Now, the second step is we will repartition both the data frames into a different number. Now, before that, if you want to check how many partitions the data frames are read, we can write df underscore one dot rtd dot get num partitions. Okay, you can see it has been read in eight partitions. Similarly, for the second data frame, again, eight partitions. So we understand both the data frame will be read by eight tasks in parallel. Okay, now let's repartition the data the first data frame in five partition and the second data frame in seven partition so i'll create two data frames three and four i'll run, run this completed no actions done so there will be nothing in the spark job yet good let's go back and see the number of partitions now so i'll write df underscore three dot rdd dot get num partitions so you can see five so the number of partitions has changed from eight to five if I run it as 4, you'll see 7 because we have made the repartition as 7. So, after repartitioning, we will need 5 tasks and 7 tasks each. Okay. Now, next thing, we are going to join both the data frames based on the ID. And this joining will happen on the data frames that are repartitioned, which are 3 and 4. Let me run this. Still no action. So, nothing should be there in the jobs tab. Correct. Let me go back. Now. We are doing a sum. The sum is based on the ID column and we are renaming this as total sum. So this sum will happen on the joint data frame. So let me run this. Still, this is a transformation. There is no action yet. So if I go back and refresh, nothing is there. Now we have the action, which is so. So whatever sum is generated, let's view this. So as soon as I run this, we'll see a job triggered in the Spark UI, which will do all these operations that we have done till now. Let me run this. Awesome. 
we got a sum of 4998 now if i go back and refresh the spark job great we have one job here now if i expand this okay there is a lot of things happening in the background now why this is happening like this we have around six stages and each stage is doing something if i go down okay there is the information about the stages now before we deep dive more into the stages let me go back to the job once more here you can see we have completed six stages and the total number of tasks triggered is 229 now before we see this in the spark ui is it possible for us to understand how this is 229 the answer is yes let me go back and make you understand now there is a concept in spark called pipelining it implies whenever possible spark will try to pack as much as transformations possible into a single stage and whenever it encounters a supple or an exchange state it will create a new stage so if we see we are reading here in two data frames so spark will create one one stage each and since there are eight partitions so eight tasks will be involved in reading both the data frames now next we are doing a repartition of both the data frames so for the first data frame there is a shuffle because this is an exchange where eight partitions are being converted into five so there is a shuffle stage involved here so spark will again create one more stage where it will involve five tasks because we are converting eight into five but the data that would be read for this will be read from the eight tasks so what it has to do is it has to write the data somewhere and this step has to read that data similarly for df4 again we will read the data from df2 and it will again create one stage with seven tasks so till now we have four stages and each having eight and seven eight and five respectively next we are going to join this both repartition data into one so again there is a shuffle involved and in this shuffle this join is going to read the data from this tasks which are writing the data from five and seven partitions so it will create one stage which will read data from five and seven tasks respectively and it will write data to 200 partitions now why this is 200 partition because the default shuffle partition for spark is 200 you can go into the spark config and you can check that out but we can also check that configuration and we will do that when we will work on the optimization for now the default configuration for spark for shuffle is 200 so this join data will create one stage which will write the partitions into 200 and next there will be one stage again created for the sum which will read the data from this 200 shuffle partitions and only create one task because we have to do sum on all the data so all the data will be read and processed by only one task which will create the sum and show to us and this is how it is being done so if you note here we have one stage two stage three four five and six stages so we have six stages each with eight eight five seven two hundred and one respectively so these are the total number of tasks so if you add them up they are 229 which is what we have seen in our plan let me expand this one let me go back and if you see we have eight tasks for reading the first data frame again eight tasks for the second data frame then we are repartitioning with seven and five then there is a shuffle partition of 200 and then all the data being read and processed by only one task and this is how you can determine the number of tasks required i hope you have understand the background let's see the DAG now now if you see the DAG, there are two stages where we are reading the data this is the first stage and this is the second stage and in both the stage we are reading the data this is because of the eight tasks each in which we read the data for both the data frames now there is an exchange this exchange is because of the repartition of data if you see the second stage and the third stage has five and seven tasks where we are doing the repartition so this is the stage where that repartitioning is happening and after that repartitioning both the data are read in stage four which is for the join where we are generating 200 shuffle partitions which is by default so both the exchange data which is the repartition data are read and joined and then that data is being pushed to one partition in order to do the sum which is being done in the last stage so the thing that you have to notice here for the first two stages where we are reading the data frame we are writing the shuffle data and if you notice the same shuffle data is being read by the repartitioning data 
and again it is writing the data which is being read by this task so this two if you join both of them contributes to 8.2 kb which is being read by this task to join the data and it is writing 11.2 kb which is for the 200 shuffle partitions which is being read by the last task and which is providing us the output so i know this can sound confusing for the first time but now you know how this is happening in the background how this dag can help you to understand what is happening in the background okay before we move on let me show you the explained plan for this so to see the explain plan you just need to type the data frame name dot explain if you run this it will print out the physical explain plan now to read the explain plan we go from bottom to up now the first thing that you see is a range this is where we read the data now if we go back to the dag you see this number 3 if we go back and you see this number 3 this implies this dag is reading the data which is mentioned here in the explain plan similarly if you see this line it says 1 and it is again the range if you go back and you see 1 this is the dag which is doing and then the exchange is happening now if you see the exchange here now this is where it is repartitioning the data because it mentions here repartition by number so it is doing that repartition here and then this exchange is going to the second and fourth step which you can see in the dag here as second and fourth which is being used to read in and join the data now if i go back and you see the join is happening at 5 now if we go back this is 5 where the join is happening now if we see again you see this 5 being used to do the hash aggregate and the 6 is what is giving us the result if you go back and see this 5 is going to 6 which is giving us the data and this is how you can understand an explain plan an explain plan can help you to understand what is happening in the background and it can also help you to optimize a lot of things and we will see that in our future sessions we will try to understand and explain plan and we will try to optimize our pipelines accordingly now in some of the cases you can see some skipped stages now what is the skipped stage there might be situations where spark can launch more than one job to do a particular task for example in the previous example we have done the sum till here now if we want to do and union with the data that we have in sum with the same data frame that we had here for the repartition df4 let me run this again now let me do the so if you see we have two jobs now for the first job it has processed till the sum that we know because we can see 229 tasks and for the union step it has done an extra job which skips all the steps and read the data and processes the union now if i go into this you can see all of this this stages are skipped because this is already processed in the previous job so what it has done is it has skipped it and then used the data to do the union here and this is how it happens in certain cases you can see more than one job launched and spark will skip the stages which are already processed or done and this is how spark optimizes its dag now there is one important thing to notice here whenever there is a shuffle or a exchange spark writes the data and in the next stage it reads the data what is the benefit here there is one benefit if it fails in the subsequent or the next stage it can read the data from that shuffle write it does not have to trigger the previous stages so if i go back to the job that we created for the sum so consider it fail in stage 2 in that case it does not need to trigger the stage 0 it can read the shuffle write which has been already done by the stage 0 it can read the data again and it can process the stage again so this helps spark to process the data in later stages even if that stage or the task fails and this is very important to understand about shuffle and to confirm that let me run the explain plan for union if you see we have a reused exchange here it provides you the id what it is reusing so it is reusing the id which is 410 it implies it is reading the data from this exchange directly it is not running this range again so if you want to confirm that just go back to the spark data frame tab you see the source string where it has triggered two jobs for that you just expand this you can see the whole bag here now if you see from this exchange it is reading this arrow mark is going directly to where it is doing the union so it is directly reading that shuffle write what it has done previously after the exchange which is for the repartitioning it is directly reading and doing the union it is no longer again triggering the stage 
to create the range and do the exchange. It is reusing that Suffle write. And this is one of the benefit of Suffle writing data. Now, I understand it can be too much to consume in a single day, but you can stop and revisit this video whenever you want. The next thing to understand is how data frames are made up of. Now, now we know that the data frames are abstraction of Spark Core APIs, right? And the Spark Core is built up with RDDs. RDDs are resilient distributed data. So each data frame is by default an abstraction of RDD. To view that, let me go back. And this is the data frame that we created from the range. Let me run this. If I do dot RDD and I run this, you see, this is a RDD. This implies any data frame that you see is an abstraction of RDD. And RDD was very popular concept when Spark started. Now, to make things easier, Spark has done a proper abstraction of RDD and provided us with data frame and data sets. And it also recommends us to use data frames and data sets going forward. So it brings us with a question when to use RDD. RDD is only recommended when you have to distribute the data physically with help of your code or you have to work extensively with Spark Core APIs. If that is not the case, then RDD is never recommended. We always prefer to go with data frames and that is what we have been seeing from day one. But we will visit RDD when we come to the closer of this course. So I hope today we have learned a lot of things. Now you understand how to look into DAG and explain plan. From our next video, we'll start looking into advanced topics and we'll also look into optimizations going forward. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.